certain point, you really have to distance yourself from the nays naysayers, from the noise, right? And that's exactly kind of what I did is, you know, I stopped watching the news. Like I realized, oh, the news causes me FOMO, makes me make bad investments because I want to sell, I want to buy. I mean, the best investments I've had ever have been just buying it and forgetting about it. Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. Austin Linney here, and I have the project manager of all project managers, Mr. Andrew. How are you doing, sir? I am fantastic. Thank you for having me. I love it, my man. Well, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and we'll kind of get rolling. Okay, so wh where do I start? I guess I'll start in my investing career because that's where I really feel like my you know entrepreneurial bug really kicked in. But more or less back during COVID, and I came to the realization that I did the normal American dream of going to a good school, um, getting a good education, getting a six-figure job, working at a prestigious institution, getting a nice swanky condo in a city, right? I had it all, yeah. right? Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I only really had like six months of reserves, right? I really um, relied on that job. I mean, yeah, maybe I could quit for six months or a year, but at the end of the day, I had to go crawling back to that job. And that, that really came face to face with me during COVID when I could ran out of things to procrastinate, ran out of movies to watch, ran out of video games to play. And I, I only had to really like look in the mirror and like, is this really what I want for my life? And at that point, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I realized the power of real estate, like my net worth was like a quarter of a million dollars. And like 80% of that came from my one bedroom condo I bought seven years ago and forgot about. And I was like, wow. So at that point, I took out a 200K HELOC, a home line of credit on my one bedroom condo in Boston and used that over the next three years to accumulate 95 multifamily rental units. I syndicated some, JV'd some, and house hacked some as well. So that's kind of my, my journey in a nutshell. And here I am today. So most people hear that and they go, wow, that's a lot in a short amount of time, right? to invest for to go from nothing to that you know obviously it doesn't happen overnight but but it it sounded like for lack of a better word you you were just like you know this is like i'm gonna do something about this and then once it took off it kind of just like it just like happened quick right and i, I think a lot of people forget that the hardest part is getting started and then after that it can it can happen so quick yeah, and it's and it's also getting out of your your bad habits. Like through my entire twenties, I was really in like a procrastination rut. Like every time I was confronted with my dreams or you know going after my goals, I would always I would always delve into a into procrastination, be it movies, be it video games, right? And then once I came to this realization, it's almost like um awkward for me even procrastinate it almost feels like i'm being unproductive right and you know maybe people look at that as a fault like i can't really relax but at the same time i've achieved so much in these three years because i don't watch netflix like i don't watch sports like i focus on my goals and my dreams mm -hmm. 24 7 and that's really how i've been able to to achieve this in such a short period was it any book besides Rich Dad Poor Dad? Was it any book or any habit that got you out of the procrastination? Because I know a lot of people feel like they're stuck in neutral. Yeah, I mean, by all, I mean, definitely morning routine. Like that was the game changer, right? I do the Miracle Morning with Hal Elrod, uh, Sabers, Silence for um, Affirmation, sorry, Silence for Meditation, A for Affirmation, D for Visualization, E for Exercise, R for Reading, S for Scribing or Journaling. I do that every single morning and I literally spend, I wake up probably about five, 6 a.m. and I spend a good two to three hours on personal development every single morning. And that's really my game changer because every single morning I get to realign with what my 10-year goals are, what my five-year goals are, what my one-year goals are. I'm like, what can I do today to get me closer to that path, right? So that's been a game changer for me in a, 
in a nutshell for sure. And the other thing is just constant um, self-discovery, like just being a, a constant learner, just trying to grow every single day, like those two kind of combined really, really helped me scale for sure. Mm -hmm. And did you, and of your friend group and all that stuff, did you get any pushback when you started wanting to invest in real estate, like other people in your job or like other guys that you call friends? Exactly. I mean, you're hundred percent right. And at a certain point, you really have to distance yourself from the nays naysayers, from the noise, right? And that's exactly kind of what I did is, you know, I stopped watching the news. Like I realized, oh, the news causes me FOMO, makes me make bad investments because I want to sell, I want to buy. I mean, the best investments I've had ever have been just buying it and forgetting about it, right? So re removing the news, removing like you're the average of the five people you associate yourself with. So, I mean, I obviously still have my college buddies and my, my high school buddies, but at the same time, I'm going to regulate how much I hang out with them because more or less, I started hanging out with people with hundreds of units and three years later, I somehow have a hundred of hundreds of units. It's not mm -hmm. common sense. You know, you just see what other successful people are doing in your area and kind of copy and paste that formula. So like, so being very controlling uh, of my external environment and the information that comes into my mind every single day has been instrumental for sure. Like, absolutely. Guys, let me take a minute to tell you about my buddies over at Lead Hub, Ben and Aaron the best humans I know. Not only are they amazing at marketing for trade companies, but Ben started his HVAC company in his garage, sold it for multi-million dollars. So when this guy talks, I listen. When we took over Deets Mechanical, we had 22 reviews in 22 years in seven short months. We went from 22 reviews to 107. We went from a 4.2 to a 4.7. We tripled our Facebook presence and we tripled our calls. If you're an HVAC, plumbing, electric, landscaping company, and you're looking for a no BS approach to marketing, you're looking for people who have done it before, you got to go to leadhub.net. One of the greatest days of my life was I have two friends who do like high finance, like one manages like 5 billion. The other one is like, runs a, like a $500 million fund. And wow. we had a meetup one time in Austin and there was like 15 real estate investors and like two of them. And you know, everybody have a couple of cocktails, you know, this is back, back when I was uh, not sober and uh, they got into a heated discussion, who was a better investor who, mentally, emotionally. Right. And he, the, the stock market guys actually said something that I agree with. He said, look, if your real estate house, if your investments were a ticker tape and every five seconds it went up or down. He goes, y'all will emotionally be ripped apart. <laughs> he goes, that's what we deal with every day. And that was the big argument. And it's always stuck with me because I have another friend who's high in high, uh, big time multifamily, 90 million in the last four years. He said, he has a great quote. He says, every investment looked at on the proper time horizon is a great investment is that I think my biggest issue with real estate, especially with the new people getting in is they want it to be this like home run short term thing and man you said you said it yourself the best investment is the one i forgot about like the best investment you can put in yourself is that morning routine because you forgot how e easy how hard it was to start and then you started and you just do it over again right that's the key is like to drown out the noise the news the mark cuz there's always people buying whether the rates are high or the rates are low you just become neutral, right? And I think that really creates something special. Still the game, Money by Tony Robbins. And he went over the, what were the best performing brokerage accounts. Mm -hmm. And they figured out that the best performing brokerage accounts were the people that died. <laughs> that is so funny i didn't know that story that is funny i've never heard that one that is funny and time cures it all apparently so <laughs> dude that is hilarious i remember a guy on bigger pockets i remember this like it was yesterday he bought uh like in a like a condo or what in la like right before 2008 and he he lost like three fourths value of the condo, but he was like super wealthy. 
and it was for his daughter. So he didn't care. Right. And his comment was, and I sold that for a 300% profit when the market came back and he, re he realized in his portfolio, I think he had like a couple hundred million. He had never lost money on a property that he held for longer than seven years ever. Wow. Right. And, and so there's, there's so many reasons is that, is that, you know, I'll use a different strategy, profit first, putting money away and, and forgetting about it, having a bank account that you don't have access to a debit card and just put money. Like I do whole life insurance policy, which is like, you know, just something I do for myself later. I wish I would have started that at 18 years old and put 50 bucks in every week. Like that would be amazing but we don't do that because we want the diet we want the short fad we want all these things like um you know and you're not going to get to your 95 units and stop like so stop stop behaving as such like if you got 95 you're going to want 195 and 295 and then yeah. some days it might switch to something different but we invest as if we're hoping to get out of something instead of it bringing something to our life Investing is a powerful thing because every single month it compounds and grows bigger and bigger and bigger, especially with real estate where everybody's focused on cash flow. Yet I made most of my money on the other three levers of real estate. Okay. Tax benefits, barely paying taxes, mortgage pay down. I mean, every single month my net worth goes up by tens of thousands of dollars because my tenants are paying down my mortgage. Appreciation. I've gotten all of my properties through lines of credit taking the equity in the property and buying more property with it, right? And the cash flow has been simply a defective defensive mechanism just to kind of keep the property afloat, keep it running to the standard that I, I expect. Um, but yeah, I mean, up until I think two weeks ago, I took my first cash flow check. Prior to that, just letting it compound grow. And that's kind of how I've, I've been able to scale is just letting it compound over two, three years, you know, house hacking, living off two, $3,000 a month you know, making a quarter of a million dollars in my five side hustles I do, right? Like, yeah. that's how you do it, is, you know, it, it, slow and methodical, throw it, slow and methodical, you know? So you, so you got the job, the project manager, you got the real estate. What else are you doing on the side? I self-manage 24 of my 95 units. I'm also an investor-focused agent. I have about three agents under me as well. I also host a couple different meetups, so... I have my hands in a lot of things, but the one thing I will say is what I did intentionally do is I did intentionally build bridges that were synergistic, right? So once I built a bridge, it feeds into another bridge. It feeds into another bridge. So, you know, I definitely am a big advocate for staying extremely focused, but if you are going to build bridges, I think it's smart to build bridges that kind of lead to the same path. And, and I think that's the... I think that's the number one thing that people misunderstand is that you, you said it perfectly when it all flows into the same bucket, it's super easy to talk about, right? Like I have many different things that I'm doing. And most of the time I learn the hard way is I don't tell people, you know, 90% of the things I'm doing because their head would be spinning and it's just not, it's just not prudent information, but, but there's nothing in my life in the buckets that I do live in that is outside of, things that don't just light me up or, or things that don't have the begin to end. The way I describe it to people is I want, I want to control all aspects of the funnel, not just part of the funnel. So meaning it's super easy to talk about with you. Okay. We're going to talk about real estate. Okay. I do the real estate over here and that's what we do. Blah, 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 blah. Like, but guess what? I also, we have a lot of project manager stuff going on right in our job because we're doing large scale commercial HVAC jobs. Boom. So those are the two things that you and I are going to connect on and we're going to jam on that. Outside of that, we're good. We don't need to talk about anything else. But that took me, you know, almost 38 years to realize that not everybody needs to hear everything that's going on because, you know, a lot of people can't handle it. But more importantly, it just confuses them, right? But when you're, when you're you see your audience, right? If you went to um, your meetups, like I'm sure different meetups in different areas have different real estate. So there's different conversations. Like that's the game is like knowing your audience and then sharing what's necessary uh, for that person and then moving on with your day. Absolutely, for sure. Um, so I guess, you know, the question that everybody's going to ask is how do you do it all, right? 
how do you do it all? So that brings up one of my favorite books, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And in that book, he talks about, you know, think with the end in mind. So, you know, have your 10-year vision in, in mind and reverse engineer it. But he also talks about a time matrix where, you know, it's very important to stay in a matrix where um, you stay in the buckets of urgent and important, urgent and not important, sorry, urgent and important, important and not urgent. And you stay away from the buckets that are not urgent, not important, and not urgent, um, and not important and urgent. So you really kind of craft your life to really stay in the productive time zones. So every single day, I'll kind of figure out like, all right, you know, what, what do I need to get done? What's a fire? What, what systems can I create to make it so this fire isn't a fire and, and there's a process in place to make it not a fire so I don't have to focus on that? And I can really focus on working on my business and not in my business on the daily fire. So it's very much just prioritizing uh, what will get you to your next goal, but at the same time, creating systems in place so you actually have the thought freedom to focus on building your business. Mm -hmm. And have you, has it become a process that you've gotten better with over time? Or are you just like, the problem is, especially in multifamily and some of the things that you're doing, like the emergencies can be an emergency, right? Somebody's living in a unit, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you handle when something overtakes your day or, or something like that comes up that has to be handled immediately? you know, when you have your job and all your other stuff going on, how do you do that? It's very important to create a team where um, they can take away things that are your weaknesses so you can focus on things that are your strength, right? So an example of this would be, you know, I have three social media virtual assistants. Um, I've realized that social media is very important for my business in regards to bringing, increasing my brand, bringing in capital, people bringing deals to me right? But social media, like you said, it drains me, right? So I sub that out to a virtual assistant. I just record the content. I send it to her. They make it look pretty. They give me the captions. I post it, right? Or, you know, when it comes to self-managing my property, going back and forth with the tenants drains me. Getting the contract out there, figuring out all the times where everybody works for everybody absolutely drains me. So I hired a 18-year-old um, young kid that wanted to learn from a real estate investor. We pay him like $15 an hour, give him incentives. And he does all that tenant communication. He meets the contractors, right? So when I do get that call, I simply just forward it to my to my delegates and they handle it for me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about creating those systems in place to take care of those fires so you can really focus on the bigger picture. So how many people actually work for you through all your things, do you think? I have about seven people that work for I have three virtual assistants, I have three agents, and I have one assistant property manager. Do you ever do you ever think about that guy three years ago that was playing video games? Like I'm looking at you now and like you man, you're dialed in, dude. Like you got your people working for you, you got people learning from you, you got tenants that you're housing, you got businesses going, you're still crushing your W2. Like it's it's pretty cool to see like in a short amount of time what you've created. To your point, I couldn't the previous me three years ago could never do this, right? They would have no chance in hell to manage all of these things. But throughout these three years, I've created the person that can handle these multiple, you know, these multiple businesses, these multiple employees, right? So going back to that point, it's all about creating the ideal version of yourself every single day. So if you know where you want to be 10 years from now, that's going to require a certain type of person, a, a certain type of individual that can res, uh, resolve bigger challenges. And if I want to be that person, I got to create the person to get there. Right. So to your point, like that through that three-year-old self, like I, um, I love that person because that's who I used to be, but I do not align with that person whatsoever to today if me and my former self three years ago met in a bar i wouldn't even know what to talk about with them to be honest with you <laughs> do you do you think any aspects of your w2 being a project manager certain traits of that business do you think it's helped you and succeed because that uh, is a i look at my project manager he's a young kid we we gave him the job 
uh, knowing that he wasn't qualified, but he's one of the smartest kids I ever met and he's crushed it every day since like, but he can handle a lot. He's bouncing all over the place. Yes. I mean, project management is a fantastic trade because it teaches you to own it. It teaches you to own the task, make sure it gets from uh, point A to point B to point Z until it's done. Um, so it's re very powerful for creating um, accountability. Um, so absolutely. And the other thing that I think is really uh, a transferable trait from project management is the ability to figure it out. Like if I run across, across a problem, I'm not just going to raise up my hands like, well, what do I do now? It's going to be like I being a project manager, you really teach yourself to, to, fit, to come up with multiple solutions and really kind of dial it in. Yeah, because that's one of the things I'm doing with my team. So got a lot. We didn't have any managers when I came on board. So we went from 19 staff when I came on board. We're at 48 now in six months. So boom, wow. you know creating managers, I have a rule. The rule is I'll help you with your problem, whether it be with a customer or another employee. But if I help you, I'm taking it to the end. Okay. That's the rule with you. You can handle the problem with yourself, but if it comes back around to me and you don't handle it from start to finish, then I'm owning it and you're out of the situation. That's, that's my game with them. Right. And so what it's done is it's really taught them ownership of a problem and slash solution. But a lot of times they come to me, they've identified the problem and they've already handled the solution without even running it by me. And, and I'm, that's creating a different animal here. I, I don't want yes men, yes women. I want people that have a solution-based mindset. And now that I... Think about everything that you have going on. I'm like, man, a project manager job would be really great for a lot of young people to really understand kind of the the quintessential, right? Like think about a project manager of a development company. Like how many, how many, I can, God bless you. How are you dealing with the contract with the city, the permits? There, there's, I don't think people look at their job enough to say like, okay, what are the skills that I'm going to gain instead of just going to sit behind a desk and type on a computer. Yeah, project management, I mean, it's it's more it's more or less teaching you how to like run a professional mastermind because as you know, mastermind yes. is incredibly important mm -hmm. for surrounding yourself around people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sure accountable, right? And to have a project manager there like they that they're essentially training to keep themselves accountable, be kind of their own self mastermind in a sense, right? So it's it's absolutely transferable. It's probably the utmost skill that's that's helped me with my success. Uh, because mm -hmm. I mean, prior to being a project manager and growing up, like I was very introverted. I took Adderall. I didn't even know how to talk with people, right? But going mm -hmm. through the process of being a project manager really taught me soft skills, really taught me that this is a relationship game and it's not a numbers game, right? And to get things done, you have to be collaborative and work with people and create win-wins, right? So those are the things that really taught me. And, and all that is super transferable to real estate. I mean, at the end of the day, I've done in countless multi, countless deals because I've done one deal with somebody and they like working with me and they brought me another, right? And people don't understand that a lot of times. If people like grind somebody in a deal, yeah, you may win that one deal, but you, you, you know, you screwed like your 20 other deals down the road that you would have never gotten, right? Mm -hmm. So- um absolutely i think i think it's a great skill in any trade for sure uh bruce uh, peterson is a friend of mine uh who wrote a book called syndication is a, a biatch uh and uh he's done a lot of large scale multifamily almost 5000 6000 units and he told me something one day he said i never ever remodel my entire building and i only remodel 50% and i was like why you're not extracting the most value out of it he goes because i want the buyer that buys my property to have some meat on the bone for himself too and i was like that's an amazing that's yes. yes 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 and that really was something that i lived by already but him hearing that story it's like okay he's not trying to extract every dollar out of this property he's trying to continue the, the flow of value and and that's going to come back around to him um, you know, with sellers and, and buyers. So I love that you said that. 
what is kind of on your vision for like next year and the years on, like, what is it that you want to do for yourself? So this year I'm on track to close a hundred units, which my original goal this year was 20 units. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, my ultimate goal over 10 years is I would love to syndicate 10,000 units, mm -hmm. love to actively own 400 units, travel to a hundred countries, write a book and help 10,000 people reach financial independence. Those are my, those are my goals. Um, and they really give me purpose every single day when I kind of look at them. And, and I figure out like, what can I do this day to get me there? Right. Mm -hmm. I love those goals. Unpack for me how you set a goal of 20 units and you're almost at a hundred, like how, like, oh my God, the interest rates are terrible and nobody's buying. Like, how are you doing this right now? I'm just being facetious. But, oh, it's uh, funny because, you know, I do, we have, we, I do masterminds, right? We write our like year goal on there. Right. And I wrote my year goal where I was like, I want to close on 12 units. And everybody in my house was like, dude, like you're completely initiating this right now. Like, what are you doing? All right. I'm like, all right. All right. So I bumped it up to 20. And I'm like, I want to syndicate a deal, even though like I've never syndicated a deal before. It was, it was a, it was a big goal. Right. But lo and behold, I ended up syndicating a deal that year. It just came manifested like out of nowhere. Somebody brought me a fantastic deal. They needed somebody to help raise the capital. Me and my partner took the challenge on and um, we closed that in August. So that bumped in 65 units. And then I ended up JVing on two six plexus. So that bumped me up to 72 units. Um, and then I actually have a 32 unit under contract in Lancaster, South Carolina that I'm JVing on. So with that, that'll, punch, that'll push me up to on like 105 or something like that. So the question is, what is what are you gonna write down for next year? <laughs> I'm almost scared because I know if I write it down, it's going to become reality, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, but to your point, you know, I just want to, I just want to add, like, everybody was freaking out about the rates, freaking out about the markets. Meanwhile, I'm scooping up properties at a five and a six percent interest rate, and right now, people are looking at me like I'm a genius, right? But no, I just didn't let the noise confuse me. I stayed down. I stayed focused, right? And I, I zagged when everybody zigged. Right. I mean, those are the best investors when they when they are contrary to, to popular belief when they go the opposite direction. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's just a big a big reason for my success is I just I don't listen to the noise. I don't let it sway me, you know. I love it. People want to find out more about you, buddy. They want to they want to reach out to you. How would they do that? Uh, they would reach out to me on Instagram at Investor Freed, as well as on Facebook uh, and LinkedIn at Andrew Freed. I love it, man. So inspiring. So great, guys. Send that to a friend that's thinking about investing that wants to get inspired. Uh, and we'll see you next time.